Hello everybody, it's Chad at Guru Micro. And today I'm gonna to be taking apart this iPad 7th gen. It's not terribly cracked, it is the top here. Uh, usually with devices like this one, they're a lot easier to work on. The next one I'll be doing after this later is, as you can see, in a lot worse condition. These are much more difficult uh, and time consuming, especially when you have this highly fragmented edge. It makes uh, uh, the removal of the screen much more tedious and time consuming. So actually when I price these, I do take that stuff into consideration, um, as well as looking at the corners, uh, making sure the edges are straight, um, and there's not bends and dents and things like that in the housing that have to be addressed in order to get the new glass to seat. Um, the other issue, especially when you're dealing with ones like this, as opposed to ones where the lower part of this screen is actually still fully intact, one piece, um, and this is probably whenever working on an iPad uh, that has the, uh, the fingerprint touch ID, you definitely want to be aware, very aware of how the home button flex assembly actually sits inside of this. Um, you can see the home button right here, this cable actually underneath the glass, this is glued where you see this blue tape. Uh, that is actually glued to the back side of the glass, okay? So as you come in here and start taking these fragments out, you have to be really careful. If you damage this chip or damage this cable in any way, uh, your Touch ID won't work anymore. So keep that in mind uh, whenever uh, you take these apart and use extra care in particular right here as you're running the tool around to separate this glass from the housing. You do not want to run the tool anywhere. I avoid this entire area totally um, with the tool because this actually folds under the LCD right here and plugs into the logic board. So anyway, right here and through here is the most delicate uh, area when you're taking these iPads apart. All right, so I'm gonna move this one off to the side and this is the one, sorry about that. This is the one I'm gonna be uh, uh, working on here today. Go ahead and first things first, always power off. And a quick rundown uh, just of the tools that I like to use here. Um, a lot of people use the picks uh, just as spacers once you open this. Um, I find this tool right here, this pry tool from uh, Kion Lee, I believe that's the way you pronounce it, um, as well as this. For iPads, these are my go-to. Um, and then, of course, you're gonna need a battery, uh, a battery block of some sort. I just make these myself out of a plastic card. Uh, some people use a guitar pick, cut a notch in it. Um, but the idea with this, uh, you'll see coming up, um, is to make sure and disconnect the battery from the logic board before you start to manipulate the flex cables on the LCD panel. Um, the other thing I keep around is 91% isopropyl. I like it in a spray bottle personally, makes it easy to apply. I apply it to my tools see all that coming up here and then uh, compressed air which you're going to need on reassembly in particular to make sure uh, under the glass and the LCD is spotless and dust free just like it is when it comes from the factory and finally and most importantly you're going to need a heat gun or a heating pad of, uh, uh, of some sort to work this glass I just use a regular heat gun you could even use a hair dryer uh, on high setting it would be plenty hot to actually soften up the adhesive um, okay uh, let's get started here okay so I'm gonna start out here uh, just heat all the way around all the edges even up here where it's highly fragmented. I'm 
actually once I get it warmed up pretty well, that's when I like to take the 91% uh, isopropyl and I like to hit all the edges. I don't want to spray too much up here where there's holes and pieces of glass missing. That's where I come to this tool. Again, uh, you can find these on eBay or pretty much any. Uh, I think I might've got this from whole, uh, or Gadget Fix maybe, or it may have come from uh, Mobile Centrix, I can't remember. And again, this area right here, where I know that cable comes, I'm not going anywhere near that area with this tool. So this tool has this little tiny uh, sort of, uh, if you can see there, it's sort of it's sort of bent like L-shaped and is very, very small. You can fit that right down in and it will actually run along that, uh, that seam there really easily. I'm even gonna go up here where it is fragmented with this. Now up here at the top, there's, there's quite a bit more adhesive than what you have right here on these edges. I'm gonna go ahead and hit both these edges real quick. This side already dried up because of the warmth. Sometimes I spray actually and just kind of work it with the tool, but this is cutting through. I can already feel it's cutting through pretty well on this one today. And again, right here, I take extra care anytime because I do know there's a control chip right here and the cable runs right through here. So I don't wanna go very deep anywhere around that area. So usually once I get that first tool in there to sort of break down the uh, adhesive a little bit, I'll move on to this tool, which I use for the majority of the separating process. And again, I'm just gonna work that in. And this particular iPad, is having just fragmented mainly at the top, this is usually not this easy. Your iPads are gonna be much more frustrating typically because the way they break uh, is usually over the entire surface of the iPad. So this one, and again, I have these little marks on here. So I can see my depth is, I'm going five millimeters. That keeps me from going too deep. It's deep enough to cut the adhesive, but it's not gonna let my tool hit on the actual LCD screen underneath. So it's very important, uh, again, to make sure we don't wanna damage the LCD doing this, obviously. So I'm gonna go right, I'm gonna run this right up to the home button here. I know on this side of the home button, uh, we're safe. There are some Wi-Fi antennas underneath, right about where I'm at right now but on, on the six, seven, eight gens, which what most people are working on, it's not really uh, too, too hard to work around those. On the earlier models, like the uh, iPad 2 and 3, you really had to be careful because the Wi-Fi antenna was actually adhered to the back side of the glass. Okay, here again, I'm looking at my depth gauge here. I know I don't wanna go Actually, through here, I don't even like to go five millimeters. Uh, so I'm gonna go less than that. It's not gonna cut everything clear through. And when I get to this edge, I'm not, I'm not even gonna go all the way around it, okay? Because I know, I've done so many of these, I know exactly where that cable is. If it's your first time, I just suggest staying away from that entire area. And then, all right, I'm gonna work this side now. And when we get to this corner, so now we're into some more fragmented stuff. Uh, still gonna use the same process, so I'm gonna get plenty of alcohol on this tool. And in the corners, there is a thicker amount of adhesive on these. And I'm just slowly letting that alcohol, so I can see that the tool is wet, the, the alcohol is seeping into the cracks there nicely and around the edge. But on these corners, do you take your time, especially when you have all these fragments. But uh, this tool, I'm telling you, I can't imagine uh, trying to do this repair without these types of pry tools. It is it, it can be done, and I have done it in the past, but these pry tools make all the difference in the world uh, as far as uh, getting these little fragments off the adhesive and whatnot. So I think... 
with this corner. I'm gonna bring some more light in on my work here. With these corners, there's another tool that I do like to use once I start to get some of this stuff up. They make these uh, X-Acto blades. Um, spade, spade tip. Sometimes those come in handy, in particular when you get into areas like this. Uh, you can get in there with this tool and just pry these little fragments up. But you can see this process is tedious. Yes, I'm not wearing gloves. I've had people comment, why don't you wear gloves? I just choose not to. Occasionally I get stuck, but again, I've done hundreds of these and me just gripping things. Uh, it's just easier without gloves, but I'm not suggesting that you don't use gloves, but I don't like them personally. I take my chances, I guess, here. Everything's soaked in alcohol, so even when I do get poked, I normally, if I do and I draw any blood, I just spray alcohol on it and continue on. But uh, So this edge right here, as fragmented as this is, sometimes when you get the adhesive in a solid piece, you can apply some more heat to this. You might be able to pull this whole segment up, uh, all these little fragments being on the actual adhesive. I may be able to pull a good bit of this up, possibly. Uh, we'll see here. If you watch, see how that's kind of all those fragments. And I am wearing glasses right now. That is another thing I'm going to tell you. Um, you definitely, especially if you're doing something like this, because the fragments will fly. But I do wear, uh, actually, they're like magnifying type glasses. Help see this stuff a little easier. And then... I might use this tool. I might actually go ahead and hit this with a little more alcohol. Try not to overdo it here. I don't want to get alcohol on the LCD. The LCD starts down here, right about here. So I was keeping my spray right on this edge. Um, just, uh, just so you know, sometimes when working on these edges, it is easier sometimes, um, depending on how, on how it fragments. Um, sometimes being fragmented can make it easier. Sometimes it can make it more difficult. When the fragments run all the way down into here and they just go straight to the edge, those are more difficult. When they're little fragments like this, it actually makes things a little easier. Um, there's also a tool, which I have floating around here, which, you know, maybe if you're just doing one of these, you're not gonna worry too much about this. But this tool is actually designed to fracture the glass okay and this is an adjustable tension so you can see you push this down it's like spring loaded and i'll just show you well i don't want to do it right there because the camera's under that i'll do go right here and you just push that down and it actually you can see it will make smaller fragments so you can get these tools online sometimes that does come in handy a lot of times i don't need to use it and I'm gonna go ahead, add a little more alcohol here. And I'm gonna try and get all this up in one piece if I can. So kind of pulling and cutting with the, with the pry tool. Yeah, it ripped, but not a bad little strip. Into the trash. All right, guys, I think what I'm gonna do, it's gonna be the same process. I'm gonna work this tool all the way around here. I'm going to pause this and then uh, we'll pick up when I'm ready to actually lift the glass once I have uh, cut all the way around the edge. All right, guys, just wanted to point out a couple things here. So on these corners, this is the top corner. Here's the camera. So there's a little bracket right here uh, underneath. So you want to be careful of this lens. You obviously don't want to stick any tool in there. And then there's little square areas of adhesive right here. And this is a good time to use the X-Acto blade. And I just go in like so, and you can see what I was talking about. That little square is all covered in adhesive. Um, and then you have that again over here, and you also have your rear camera right here. The back of the rear camera is adhered to the glass. So you wanna be really careful in this corner too. 
when you pull that up, you'll see that little square right there, and this was the adhesive. It does peel away. Once you lift the glass, you can peel away, but you can see where that camera was stuck right there uh, to the back of the glass. And look, I'm gonna pull this, and since I ran that tool around there, I was able to pull out part of that adhesive, but uh, anyway, that's the adhesive. There's the rear camera. Uh, you can see right there. So you wanna take care in that area. It's easy to figure out where it's at. Just look at where the camera is. Okay, not quite ready to lift. I'm gonna just run the tool on this edge a couple more times. Um, and then I will cut back in here and show you how to lift the screen once we get the edges all cut. Okay. So I think I have this cut enough. You can see I'm able to lift this glass now, uh, at least up to this point, up to about the home button. I have this lifted here. We have a pretty decent gap. This is still adhered and I did not touch this corner at all, as I told you guys before the reason. Um, I did run my tool down this edge, this tool. I did not run this tool, okay, just this tool just because I know that adhesive strip is so thin right here I can cut it enough with alcohol and heat and this to loosen it because I'm gonna open this thing like a book I'm gonna open any of the sixth seventh eighth ninth gens all open in the same way here this cable like we talked about before runs right here and then there are two more cables right here that actually go to the touch screen okay um, the only one we really had to care about is the home button because these other cables will be replaced. Uh, they're part of the new screen assembly. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna hit this with a little more alcohol. And again, this area, I was really careful because I know that cable's here. So this part can get a little bit tricky, okay? You gotta be careful. And again, I'm keeping my eye on that five millimeter mark, just working this tool, poking it in there. Uh, and I'm not gonna go around this edge. Now, I'm gonna add heat here. We'll have that alcohol. And a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat this corner or edge. Okay. And I do have this paper here just because little fragments might fly up and it just makes it easier to clean up. Now I'm gonna slowly Slowly lift this, and at this point, I'm also going to, I know I talked about the guitar picks as well. I'm gonna use this guitar pick because I know this guitar pick will not damage that cable, and I'm just kind of twisting it in here. Lifting with my finger here, creating a bigger gap as I go, and then using this guitar pick to finish off any adhesive that is still connecting here. All right, I felt that break free. Okay, now up here, we still have fragments, but this stuff should all lift out. And then, I know my lighting here is not cooperating, but right in here, we've also got the camera retainer has lifted. That looks good. So now I'm just gonna slowly, and again, guys, this particular screen it is not normally this easy, okay? Because this is all solid. It's allowing me to lift this whole thing nicely. When you have all these fragments all over the screen, it, you have to do it a little bit differently and it takes quite a bit longer to actually get the screen off. But you will get the idea here and I, as far as what the process involves at least uh, to some degree. All right, here it comes and it's lifted, okay? Now, if you look right, oh, let's see if I can zoom into this. If you look right here, you see the cable running from the, uh, from the home button. Here's the little chip I showed you before. It, a cable runs right here. Uh, and right here is where the cable folds under there, I think you can see it better now. You can see where that cable folds under the screen right there. So this is what we want to be careful of. 
Again, if you tear this cable or cut this cable or stretch it too much, I won't even actually lower this screen any further than I have it right now because that's gonna pull on this cable. So I generally take my compressed air can and just use that to prop up the screen at this point. Okay, I'm gonna pause this, realign some things for the film and go ahead and show you how to get the LCD out. Okay, so another thing, do not touch this screen, okay? Do not touch this. There's oils on your fingers and it is really hard to get those off. I don't touch this LCD at all. Um, even if you see little flakes or particles, don't try and wipe them off right now. Just wait. And I also recommend using the compressed air. If you do see something, a big blotch, and you just want to get that piece of foam or a little sticky stuff off, use the spray. Don't rub it. Don't touch it with a cloth. And then also, sometimes I'll do, uh, like right here, if you look, uh, You'll see where the foam, there's a little foam seal, okay? And sometimes it tears and you'll get little pieces like this. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, you'll get little pieces of foam and I do like to pick those up off when I see big hunks sticking up because they can be sticky. And if those do get on the LCD, um, it can be hard to clean it. And you don't wanna you know, have junk on the LCD when you go to to uh, put this thing back together. So not touching the LCD is very important here at this stage. Um, any pieces of adhesive around the edges that look like they got torn and maybe touching on a little bit of the LCD, I always pick those off and then I'll hit it with compressed air to knock away anything else large. Okay, there's four screws, okay, that hold this LCD in. Regular Phillips right here in the corners. So just remove all four of these. I like to lay these on a mat, uh, pretty much in the order I take them out. Um, on this model, I believe they are all the same size. On the, I think on the fifth and sixth gen, one of the screws is slightly longer. So anytime I disassemble, I always lay the screws on a magnet on a magnetic pad, uh, exactly in the order and placement that I remove them from the device just to eliminate any issues with trying to put the wrong screw in the wrong hole. And on some devices, in particular on the phones, some of the phones, uh, some of the older ones, I haven't noticed it with many of the newer ones, but like on the iPhone 6 series, uh, if you, uh, in the 5S actually, if you put the wrong screw in the wrong hole, it would go too deep and it would cut on the logic board, there's little thin traces underneath the coating on the board where all the signals are sent, and one of those screws would go through that trace and cut it and short out the phone, and you literally would ruin the device if you put the wrong screw in the wrong hole. So ever since those days, I've just always been particular uh, and extra careful to make sure the exact screws go back in the same spots. Okay. Another tool I used, didn't mention earlier, this is just a pick. It's a very strong pick. It's not like a dental pick. This thing is rigid. But for this particular phase, these are great. You don't have to use it. You could probably do it with a little flathead screwdriver. But you need to go underneath this edge right here and lift that gently. Okay, these are glued in. They put this rubbery adhesive stuff. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm gonna go right underneath this little leg. They're white and that's right where I pulled the screw out. And you see, I'm gonna lift that right there gently. Now I can actually use this hook right here to kind of help get my finger under this. Now the bottom ones, you don't have to do that because this now is going to lift this way, okay? Again, this is important because you don't wanna tear the cables on your LCD screen. Now that I've got this lifted, you can see right here, we have a cable that comes from the LCD. It goes to this plate right here. But before I do any removal of this plate, I am gonna take the screws out, but that's all I'm gonna do because I want to loosen this board up and I wanna take this screw right here out first before I unhook the LCD because this is the battery connector, okay? It has one screw in it 
and it's important whenever you work on these iPads that you put a battery block in or you will actually cause, you can actually cause um, the backlight inverter to short out, okay? So remember that. I'm gonna try my best to keep my hand out of the way here. I'm not left-handed, but I don't know if it's even gonna matter at this point. I think I will just, so you can see I'm holding this screen up with my left hand, taking out these screws. There's three on the plate. And like I said, I'm gonna remove the screws, but I'm not gonna take off the plate just yet. I'm just gonna let it lay there. Now on this model, the plate is, uh, sorry guys, I am having issues here with my camera position, but uh, this plate on this particular model, I believe, I'm gonna check it here in a second. Some of these plates, on the six series, this plate is actually glue, is actually got adhesive, double-sided adhesive. Yeah, this one doesn't on this particular model. So I can go ahead and lift this plate, but I'm not gonna unhook the screen yet. I like to do that just to remove because this board is screwed down by those screws. It doesn't just hold the plate on, it actually screws the board down. And I need to kind of get under this board a little bit um, to get it off of the battery. So now I'm gonna remove the battery screw. This battery block must be plastic, okay? Don't stick any metal pry tools in here or underneath this, okay? Because you will break something or short the board. I'm gonna use the edge of this just to kind of lift the board a little bit first, just to kind of sort of loosen it. And then I have a notch cut and that notch is gonna straddle that screw hole. So this part can be a little tricky because I'm trying to hold up the screen. I'm trying to get this thing in here and just be patient. Sometimes I even just warm it up a little. If some of them are easy and that slides right in there and some of them you got to fight and struggle with. And this feels like it's one that's going to give me a little bit of a fight. So I'm just going to add very little heat. I'm not heating this up much at all. Just even from a distance, just blowing some warm air on that. A little bit, just a little bit. And you wanna try this tool under the board right here again first, because the board is glued, okay? So that's what makes it difficult to get the tool in there sometimes. Oh man, this one is tough today. That thing does not wanna give. Okay, there it, there it went. I got one side in, the other side is in. Now, what, what I'm gonna do here is hit the power button and hold it for like five seconds. I'm watching the screen to make sure it does not turn on and it's not, and I'm holding the power button. So it's good, we've drained all the power off the board. Now I can get this LCD out of my way. And it is this one simple, and again, plastic tools. This is called a spludger. It's sharp on one end, pointy on the other. I use the flats flat end, just get underneath, right on the side, and then pry up gently and work your way across that thing. And once you get that, there you go. LCD's out, notice I'm holding it underneath. I've never touched this surface. It's perfectly clean. It's got a couple dust specks, but I'll take care of that at re reassembly. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this, put this screen in a safe place, protected, and I'll be right back. Okay. So next thing we need to do is get the digitizer, which is the glass, uh, removed. So our battery block stays. That will never, that won't come out until I reconnect and I'm ready to do the final testing. So that will stay in. Sometimes I tape this down. Uh, generally it stays in place. I don't really work around that area that much now, but um, okay. So your home button cable which we, uh, I was talking about earlier. I'm gonna tip this just a bit. Comes down here. This is glued, okay? This is glued to the back of the glass. So you can't just yank this off, all right? It's kind of a slow process here to get this out. Um, but there's a little rubber on this, on the seventh, eighth, and ninth gen. You have this little rubber piece here. Again, I'm just using my spludger. I'm gonna just lift that off. And you can see that 
is the shape of it. So that comes off first. Then using tweezers, I lift this piece of tape off of this connector, okay? And I usually just put it right there because I'm gonna put it back on. Now, if you have a model that has, uh, if you have a model of iPad that has cellular, there's gonna be a SIM card right here and another little extra cable you gotta kinda work around, but this process is exactly the same regardless. Um, the other thing you'll notice if you have one that has cellular, this one's Wi-Fi only, but if you have cellular, there are two as antenna assemblies um, that sit right here and here. So you wanna be careful, especially if you're running a tool down here and this is highly fragmented, you don't wanna poke or rip those antennas. They are literally flush with this metal right here. So if you open yours and you see black plastic things right here, be careful, don't damage those. That is the uh, cellular service antenna. At the bottom is where the Wi-Fi antennas are that I mentioned earlier that you do want to be careful about. Uh, you can see one is here and you have one here, okay? So you got to be careful of those too because they kind of stick up a little bit. You can snag those with the tool if you're not careful and then you'll have to replace them and it's a pain. It can be done, but it's a pain if you tear them, your Wi-Fi signal will be weak. So. Take a lot of care around those. All right, so this is ready to remove from here. I'm gonna try and zoom in as far as I can. And again, I apologize. I know the lighting and stuff isn't the greatest. Okay, so this connector has a little, on this edge of it, there's a like a little door that you flip up. Hopefully this will come across to okay. I just ever so gently lift that little flap, okay? That's gonna let me pull this cable just right out. So you don't wanna yank this cable out until you lift this flap and you don't wanna use a metal tool, use plastic, and you wanna do it so gently because these little, this little door right here, this little flap is very, very fragile. It can crack, break, and then you have a poor connection when you try to put, hook your home button back up it may not work if you damage that little flap. I get a lot of iPads in, people tried to fix them themselves and their home button doesn't work. It's because they tore this flap off or they cracked it when they were lifting it or they broke one of the hinges on one of the sides so it doesn't seat properly. Anyway, once you get that, that cable, that's good. Now we're gonna lift these two. I'm gonna do similar just under the edge very slightly and just push up, all right? I'm zoom out here because this thing is now ready for finishing pulling this screen the rest of the way off. So it is still stuck, you can see. So I just fold it, now everything's unhooked. I fold it all the way around to break that adhesive and then just give it a little pull. So the, the screen is off. This still needs a lot of work. This is not even the end of this. You can see all of the sticky glue uh, on this thing. All of that sticky adhesive, I'm gonna end up going around with this tool, this X-Acto, and I'm gonna clean every bit of that off until we're down to shiny, clean, bare metal. Got no, you can't have any stuff like this, pieces of, uh, pieces of adhesive stuck on here. The new screen won't see here. I've even got some of the black adhesive still. Uh, here the black adhesive is gone, but it's all gooey. So all that has to come off or the new glass will not adhere properly and it'll come loose. And you don't want that, obviously. The screen will literally come off. All right, I'm gonna put that off to the side though. So here, is the probably the most nerve-wracking for me anyway this is the most nerve-wracking part of this repair if you damage this cable even though we've got it this far without hurting it you can still damage the cable at, for this next step so this is where you want to be really careful i'm going to go ahead uh, and lift off there's a little piece of foam adhesive hopefully you don't have to lift this off, but sometimes, this one looks like it's not actually on, well, it is on the cable a little bit right here. Okay, heat, again, is your friend here, all right? 
and not a lot. I'm holding this heat gun six to eight inches above this cable right now. It is not close to it. I do not want to melt the cable. I am just putting warm air from a distance to loosen up the adhesive here without uh, putting too much on it. Now, again, here, plastic tool, and I'm gonna go lift this cable. It's coming up pretty easily now because I warmed it. And then that is the little piece of foam I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys can see this. I know my camera position's kind of crappy here. So I'm gonna run this tool, gently lifting this. And I'm feeling a, a little bit of resistance. I'm not, if I feel like it's not coming up easily, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna apply more heat. But everything feels pretty good thus far. And I'm gonna take the tool and this way. And now you see how I lifted that chip right there. If you rip or tear that, your fingerprint reader will not work anymore. Okay, now we got to this, this point. Now I'm gonna use the X-Acto knife with extra, extra care. This little piece you see right here is glued to the home button bracket, okay? The metal bracket that holds the home button in place. It will not usually just pull up on its own. So I like to use this razor. It's, this actually isn't razor sharp. It's a little more dull, but I like to use this tool because I can get underneath this nice and slow and not cut the cable. That is a very delicate process. Okay, the cable is free, all right? However, the bracket, is still in place and the home button, the cable is attached to the home button underneath. So using my X-Acto spade again, I'm gonna go underneath this bracket, which is glued very carefully and very slowly and not on the side. I'm not gonna pry and try and pry this side where the cable is because I would risk slipping and cutting that. I'm coming to the opposite side. I don't wanna cut that cable if this happens to slip or a piece of glass breaks and pops up. All right, you get underneath that one side and you see I just pried that up and it popped. Now I'm gonna just lift this, this bracket straight up and out like that. Now the reason I do that, if you, if you, on, this is a terrible design in my opinion. The way Apple, this, this switch they use right here, okay? You can see there's a little black dot in the center. This little black dot, if you push that bracket and wiggle it back and forth, it will snag on that little nipple and it will break it off. And then you got a whole nother thing you gotta deal with. So again, removal of that bracket, the way I just did it, that's the way you do it and not damage that little nipple. Any other way, you're gonna risk knocking that little nipple off and then you gotta replace that, that nipple or the switch or whatever. And again, we have to keep the same home button or a fingerprint I touch ID won't work anymore. All right, one more step to get this uh, free. And the home button now is actually also glued. All right, I'm gonna use same tool, a semi-doll spade, and I'm going right under that home button, I'm pushing down with quite a bit of force, okay? Because really, I just want that to slide under this whole uh, adhesive. I want to, I want to keep this adhesive, okay? And the little plastic ring that's around it that kind of acts like a gasket. But you can see the adhesive did not come up, so the ring of adhesive is still there. Uh, so I will have to put new adhesive on it, which I have that, uh, and I keep it in stock. Um, if you're doing this at home, a one-off repair, you could probably peel this up and line it back up on your new screen and reuse it. Uh, this is super sticky, it's very durable, so it can be removed and reused. Just don't get it all uh, dirty. Keep it clean and you can reuse that. Um, some screens come with the kit with the adhesive and this little plastic ring that's around the home button right here. There's a little plastic ring around the edge of this. Um, 
I like to reuse the original when, when it's possible. Sometimes it's not and you have to replace it. So when you buy your screen, uh, I know Mobile Centrix uh, does provide those. So I got a customer coming in. I'm gonna pause this. Hello. Okay guys, so the home button bracket, the retaining bracket, I'm gonna reuse this. Um, some screens will come with one. I prefer the OEM original over the aftermarkets. A lot of times it's just a cheap aftermarket bracket that comes with the uh, replacement screens, if you get one at all. But uh, I prefer the OEM. Anytime I can use OEM original part, um, I like to do that. Okay, so this does also still have adhesive on it. You can see sometimes a little bit of glue will be around the edges. So I always like to come in Again, a sharp X-Acto tool, and make sure that you remove every last bit of the old adhesive off of this. Um, you do not want to have that old adhesive weakening the bond. This is very, very important because improperly um, replaced bracket here, once you get your whole iPad back together, you don't want this bracket breaking loose off of the back side of the glass. Um, and this is just the first step of the process is to make sure this is all, all this adhesive off here is clean. I'm going to hit it with some alcohol and then I actually not only reattach it with double sided adhesive again, but I actually use another glue compound, um, to, to, uh, glue the bracket also because the last thing you want is this bracket to pull off of the glass and especially if you if it's a kid's iPad it can be kind of aggressive when pushing that home button when they're playing video games or whatever and pushing too hard on the home button if you replace this bracket and it's not properly reattached uh, and it breaks off you got to do this whole repair over again from the start so you don't want to do that um, you can see it, this side I've even scratched some of the paint off. That's perfectly fine. That doesn't affect it. Affect it. As a matter of fact, uh, sometimes I totally scratch all the paint off, but it's not necessary. Then I'm just going to use my high strength 91% uh, isopropyl and on a little cloth here. And I'm going to wipe this really well to make sure all stickiness is gone so that our new uh, double-sided tape will stick properly. And I got another customer coming in the door. I will be back. Hello. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time videoing uh, this next process here, uh, but I am gonna just show you real quick little fragments of glass sometimes floating around inside the housing. It's always a good idea to check that out. I honestly, I'm gonna hit this with compressed air before I put everything back together. Cause if you have a little glass fragment floating in here, it can actually work its way around and get stuck between the LCD and glass over time. You don't want a little piece of glass floating around uh, inside uh, underneath the glass and on top of the LCD. So, um, now I have two of these spade bits and I mentioned a little bit ago when I'm working on flex cables and things, I use one that's actually, I've even sometimes I'll dull it with a piece of sandpaper because I don't want it razor sharp. However, when I'm doing this, I like to use the one that is razor sharp. Um, and this tool to me is ideal for this. You go around. And you can see here, I'm just going to, and I'm applying quite a bit of force. It's actually flexing the blade. Occasionally I even snap these blades. I got a bunch of them, but um, you can see here what I'm doing. I'm just working this adhesive, scraping it off. And I'm not going to do film this all the way around, but you just got to be careful. Make sure you don't cut yourself and you don't slip off of this edge and slice any cables. So take your time. Patience here is important. 
You can see right there is a little fragment of glass that was stuck in that edge. Sometimes you don't even see that stuff. But it's very, very important to do this step because that gummy stuff right there, it's all lumpy and has little pieces of glass in it and whatnot. That will cause your screen to fall off. Okay, so anyway, go around the whole edge. After I, uh, after I go around and I cut all this glue off, this is still not done yet. Uh, you, you can, it's, it's nice if you have some sort of a durable cloth, okay? Paper towels tend to fall apart. I use these uh, pads. They're a really uh, strong cotton mesh. You can't, you can't rip that, pull as hard as you want, and it doesn't flake off little balls of fuzz or anything. And so I'm gonna, after, after I go through this entire edge, I will take this uh, sort of swab and go around and scrub with the 91% isopropyl. Um, after I scrape the glue, I go around and scrub again with this. And that surface right now, this little area from here is basically ready to go. So, but I got a long way to go. Uh, I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna go around uh, the whole edge. If, uh, if I think of something while I'm doing this to point out, I will kick the video back on. Otherwise, uh, we'll be back shortly. Actually, there is something I do wanna point out. Here at the top, uh, as I'm coming along and scraping up all this goo, there is a little ring, black plastic ring, uh, right here. It's not really a ring, I guess it's C-shaped, but it's a little black plastic piece that's on top of the camera bracket, okay? You don't peel that off, okay? You can scrape some of the glue off, but don't actually peel up this it's like a layer of a black film that has the adhesive on it. The reason is that piece is needed to keep the metal surface flush with this piece of black plastic that's stuck on here. So don't peel that off because you actually want your new screen to adhere to this uh, piece of plastic, all right? So that can be pulled off accidentally. Just make sure not do it. Sometimes it comes up with the glass I'll actually reattach it back down here if that ever happens, but this one didn't. It's down. Um, it's going to be a little gooey. I'm not going to try and scrape every last bit of adhesive off of this, but I am going to clean it up some. Also, I'll take a second here to mention, <clears throat> unfortunately, I've got three iPads in here right now uh, in my shop that I'm working on today. Um, and none, none of them uh, have, the corners aren't bent, okay, on any of these. I, I was hoping that one of them would be uh, so I could show the process. They make a tool um, that can straighten these corners back out. But a lot of times when the iPad gets dropped, it lands like this on the concrete or hard surface and it dents this corner in. So before you uh, reassemble the iPad, you have to make sure that every corner is rounded like it should be. So that, like I was saying, they make a tool that actually works kind of like a vise. It's two pieces once you get the glass out. Um, it kind of sits here in this corner and then another piece wraps around here and then it's got a little threaded thing. You just tighten it and supposedly it will bend the uh, 
corner out. Honestly, they don't work very well. So, um, a lot of times what I have to do, sorry, there's a train coming. Yep, I'm right next to a train depot. Okay, so I have a tool that I will use. And you can use the tool that I have. You're probably not, most people probably aren't gonna have it, but um, it is a type of pry tool that's made out of metal. Honestly, I'm not sure where it is at the moment, but most people are gonna have, you know, a, a, a regular flathead screwdriver. A lot of times that will work to straighten out a, as long as it's not too severely bent. You can take your flat head and you can stick it right here. And yes, brace yourself for what I'm about to say, but you can tap this lightly with a hammer and you can a lot of times shape, reshape that corner using a small flat head and by repositioning it while tapping uh, here uh, with, a, with a hammer lightly. Um, the other tool I have is actually curved and it will sit right in that curve perfectly. And I also do the same thing and tap that alloy out gently with a hammer. Sometimes they are really smashed and I'll have to actually put a tool in here and kind of pry that out. Um, sometimes they are so bad, I even actually have to come in and reshape this metal because it will get distorted even after straightening it out. And then I will use a really fine file and get uh, any burrs or any metal uh, on the edges there. So, you know, when I price these repairs, I look at all of that stuff really carefully. Like this iPad I just took apart here costs less. I charge the person less than what I'm gonna charge this person because all of these little fragments, this is gonna be a whole different type of process here to do this one but I wanted to use the one that wasn't quite as fragmented just to make a shorter, speedier video. Um, most people's aren't quite this smashed either. Uh, so unfortunately I didn't have one that was in between the two, which is more common, but anyway, be back shortly. Just a little something else I wanted to point out. I know I just briefly talked about this a second ago, but as I'm going around cleaning this edge, I noticed, for instance, right here, um, they're, these batteries, they, they're held together here with a type of a tape and glass fragments right there, a piece just popped off, will stick to that, okay, from your broken screen. So always look in these little nooks and crannies here and I always check this tape carefully. Um, it's on both sides of this battery uh, where the battery split. So, you know, I always look down and this little gap, uh, like I said, I am gonna hit this with compressed air too, but even hitting it with compressed air will not always get all the pieces. So do a really good visual inspection all around for glass fragments because they can work their way. Like I said, we want you to get this thing all back together and it's all sealed up and then you could just tip it one way and then the glass can actually work its way around and end up popping up through up here at the top end up sliding down and then being stuck in there and you're going to be looking at a little piece of glass floating around inside your ipad it's all glued back together so do take the time uh to go in and make sure and pick out there's another one right there so do take the time i see i see other pieces floating around here and get all of these fragments that you can I'll even turn it upside down, tap it, I'll hit, and I, like I said, I will hit it with compressed air. But I can't stress enough because you, you, once this thing is glued together and re, resealed, to open it back up again, you're basically gonna break the glass most likely. And even if you don't, you have to remove the whole thing again, clean all the adhesive off, and then get new adhesive and reapply it to the old glass. And that in and of itself can be a pain also. Uh, another thing I'm thinking of while I'm cleaning this edge still here, use extreme care, especially on this narrow band right here where the battery packs are located. 
you do not want any tool you're using, whether it's a flathead screwdriver or whatever you manage to have to clean this adhesive. You do not want to poke these batteries, okay? A puncture in the shrink wrap. Uh, I don't, I'm not even sure I should suggest this. Usually, if I, if I puncture these, I replace them. If it's your own iPad and you're doing it yourself, you accidentally poke a hole in this. I have heard people say that they have used a black electrical tape to patch the hole, but you definitely want to make sure and reseal that, okay? Um, I've seen people where these batteries have been punctured and then they'll put the device back together and then I open the device when it comes in again for some other issue, broken screen or whatever. And where there was a puncture in the battery, it's actually leaking out. I don't know what gas is coming out, but there is a gas that comes out. Sometimes the batteries will will sort of swell up a little bit. Um, when the holes in the shrink wrap, that gas that causes the batteries to swell actually leaks out of the hole and then it causes almost like an oxidative corrosion on any metal surfaces around it. So again, if you do accidentally poke a small hole in one of these battery, uh, the just the outer wrap, um, make sure to put some tape on it. Okay, this area right here, um, I mentioned earlier, this is a Wi-Fi antenna. We are at the bottom of the iPad right now. Home button would be here. On both sides, we have these Wi-Fi antennas. So as you are working your tool around here, I push that antenna down. You want to be really careful here not to cut into these antennas, but you do want to get all that adhesive up. So take a lot of care here to uh, make sure you're working the blade in a direction that is not going towards this, okay? Because you don't want to cut this antenna or you're, you'll sacrifice Wi-Fi signal strength. And there are two. So this whole bottom, again, take your time. Okay, I've got all the um, edges uh, all cleaned. All the adhesive residue is all gone. That is smooth, clean metal all the way around. You can see, uh, with the exception, there's a little gooiness on this little plastic piece right here, but it is smooth, okay? So that's the key here. The glass is gonna have new adhesive on it. Um, but the majority of all other areas where adhesive makes contact is perfectly clean. Now, this is a point I like to go in, and, and especially in these areas where you have these little flat cables like this, because glass particles get trapped under this, depending on how fragmented your screen was. So I go through and make sure to get every little nook and cranny pretty much on the board, on the edges, the corners. Okay. 
That way we don't have any surprise little flex of glass popping up. Another thing I'm going to mention, a lot of people don't pay attention to this when they do the glass, but I do because I work on so many iPads. Uh, I've noticed in particular on the earlier gens or ones that have become, I don't know, four or five years old, uh, when I open them up to do a screen repair, um, some people bring in their iPads just because they have a charging port issue where the cord is no longer recognized or they'll plug it in and it just doesn't respond. And that happens because these screws right here, over, over time they will loosen up and also these two right here. So anytime I do a screen repair, that one's loose right there. So I snug these guys up, okay? Those two, that one was good and that one was good, but most importantly, right here, I just give them a, just that that one was a little loose. Actually, that one snugged up a little bit too. And the reason I do that is because it's just to help out the customer because over time, those will continue to come loose. If this screen may not break again, but this will come loose. Um, so it's always a good idea if you're doing your iPad, check these screws. Don't crank them super, super tight, but do snug them up. Um, you can save yourself a failed charging port down the road by just taking that extra second while you've got the whole thing apart. Uh, I highly recommend it. Okay, quick, quick talk about the parts, all right? The replacement screens. Now, my vendor that I use for my iPad screens, and actually most all of my replacement screens is Mobile Centrix, okay? They are not the cheapest place to get parts, but if you want parts that work like OEM grade and don't give you problems down the road, you just wanna spend the extra money out of the gate and get the good parts. It's not worth having to do a job over again to save $10 on that part okay so i use both i've used both of these from mobile centrix they have a third uh, a third grade as well i think it's called a q7 if i remember right but these are the only two i'll use the build quality on this this is oem okay uh, this is called the premium this is supposedly an oem part I don't personally see a whole, I've, I've used these many, 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 many times. In some ways, I kind of like them better um, than the one that they're calling OEM. The price difference is like two bucks. I think this one's like two bucks more. I bought these last time because these were out of stock. Uh, so I've got like three or four of these in stock. Uh, uh, so, Either one, in my opinion, either one of these is what you want, okay? Um, this is called Premium. This is called the X07 on their website. You can see that's their brand. This does come with like a, I think this has an actual better warranty. So if you do have a problem, um, I think these have a better warranty if I remember, but you, you can look at that stuff on their website. Okay, one of the unique things about the iPad 7, 8th, and 9th gen is that they can use the exact same screen, okay? Uh, actually, I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, OEM here. On this particular iPad today. So, I'll show you here. The ones they sell that say they're, they'll fit the 7, 8th, and 9. Now, there are some differences between the eight and the nine, okay? In particular, it's in the camera retainer, okay? So the iPad I'm working on right now is, it's either a seventh or an eighth gen because it has this type of camera retainer mounted, okay? So hopefully, let's see if we can zoom in, there you go. It has that type of a retainer. So the other thing, and like I was saying, the, when I get my parts from Mobile Centric, they come with the little extra parts, which I also appreciate that because uh, some of the cheaper screens, you know, you don't get 
like th this is the camera retainer if it was a ninth gen, okay? So it's slightly different. You have to remove this one if I was working on a ninth gen, okay? The other thing, if you are using these universal screens, um, or technically they're ninth gen screens that have been fitted with the seventh and eighth camera retainer. Um, the, other, the other thing is the ninth gen, if you notice when this hits the light just right, there is a little opening right here, okay? That is for, if you look at it from the other side, you barely can see it from the outside. Uh, you may not even notice it if you have a ninth gen from the outside. But those are ambient light sensor openings. So those allow light to come in on the ninth gen. There are little sensors up in the corner of the iPad, uh, right in this vicinity. You'll see a little white sensor here and there. And that is where those, uh, why those openings are there. So that makes it, that's really the only difference in these screens are the location of the openings for the ambient light sensor and the camera retention bracket. So this being going on a seventh and eighth or seven or eight gen, I don't need to remove this bracket. So I'm not gonna mess with it. I do notice something though, as I'm looking at this, and it's important to look at this stuff and, and you know, be aware of it. When they, glued this little bracket on that to me is not exactly centered so i am probably going to move this bracket and readjust that you can say i can push it but it is glued down so i'll probably just lift it real quick and move it move the whole thing over and then reattach it um you can lift these up pretty easily if you have fingernails i'll probably use one oh there and get my fingernail under it right there so those are just held with an adhesive. You can see how easily I just lifted that off. And I'm gonna realign that one here. Uh, so it's always a good idea too to look at that because I'm telling you, sometimes these things coming out of the factory, they don't they don't take the, the care on little things like that. And then the issue is when you put this back on your iPad, if you don't fix this, your camera's gonna be slightly off center from the hole. May not affect a single thing, but I'm very, very particular, and I'm gonna make sure that's right. Okay, guys, there you go. I have removed and realigned that camera now to where I feel good that when these little pegs join with the actual camera assembly, that lens will be perfectly centered uh, in, in there, okay? Um, you know, these, all the screens come with this protective film. You can see this little tab here. That's gonna be the last thing you remove when you, just before you glue it down. That way I can handle this screen like this. I don't have to worry about smudging and fingerprinting it. Um, or if I stick it down on a little piece of sticky stuff or whatever, I know that this film on both sides of this glass will be removed as a, a final step right before gluing. Uh, one other thing I'll mention, a lot of times I will, uh, I'll just double check because these cables are folded over right here. I always just double check these to give them a little press to make sure they're adhered down over time. If this sits in your parts drawer for a while or ships on a hot, hot day that could loosen. Uh, so I always check those. Some of the cheaper screens you buy, this isn't even folded over yet and you're going to have to do that yourself. Okay. Uh, again, another reason I like to use these from Mobile Centrix is just they take care uh, and a lot of the little details that as a repair, professional repair shop, that mean mean a lot. Even something like these little tabs on this Tessa tape, okay? When I go to peel this, those little tabs are so valuable. Uh, some of the cheaper screens don't have the tabs and you got to get a knife and you got this thing at a weird angle and you're trying to peel the paper off. So just the little things. I like these lines too. For when I go to line up my home button retaining bracket uh, and put this back on, these help guide to make sure things are lined up the way they need to be. Um, this screen also comes with this little plastic retainer right here, okay? I'm actually gonna peel this up because I use the original retainer. I was able to pull that home button up and keep the original plastic retainer ring right here. So I don't need this one. I like using the original because 
I know the thickness of it is exactly correct for the home button. And so when I put that new home button on and I'm, and I know for sure when I use that original part, that home button will be flush right here like it's supposed to be. Sometimes with the aftermarket parts or even cheaper parts, when this ring is used, the home button will stick up a little bit and it'll have like a little rough edge around it. So again, the little things I like to do to make sure that when this customer gets this back, it's gonna feel exactly like the original screen did. Okay, we're ready to move on to the the home button bracket. I've already prepped this, cleaned it, cleaned it with alcohol, scraped and removed all of the old adhesive. This is the tape I use. You can find this online. Uh, there's a different versions of it. Typically, if you just look for the orange tape, uh, it'll come up. This is 10 millimeter wide, which I like. It works really well for, for uh, this particular thing. Um, there's some smaller, there's some thinner pieces for different applications. But I like to just take a, take a cut a piece off here. And I'm sorry, I got this thing lowered down here. Now I'm going to be probably hitting it with my hands, but I... This is kind of a detailed thing I'm about to do here. So, uh, anyway, uh, I like to take this tape and I'm just gonna apply that right the, like that. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again here. Apply that. Uh, I just like to go ahead and press down. Now you see I got these little bits hanging over. That has to come off. You want that tape to be perfectly flush all the way around. So I'm gonna use these scissors to make sure that's cut right up against the metal. I'm gonna do that on both sides, so. And there you go, that should be what you end up with. And it has the double-sided tape applied. And again, like I told you to, uh, a little bit ago, I am gonna still use a, an adhesive that I will apply all around the edges of this bracket once I get it glued in. Um, this is what I like right here for this job. T7000, this is a black, version of it they make a clear version I have personally found the black is better okay so I like to use the black uh, it's behind the screen nobody sees it anyway um, but I am gonna apply this all around the edge which we'll get to that here in just uh, just a few minutes okay time to put the home button back in so that is the whole removed assembly the nipple is intact, none of that was damaged. I did write the customers some initials on there because I work on multiple iPads at once in different stages and that way I do not mix up the home button assemblies because you've got to put the same home button back in the same iPad or the fingerprint reader, touch ID, whatever you want to call it, will not work. Okay, so before I... Uh, go ahead and, and glue this. It's got it's sticky still from the previous adhesive. I do use on the home buttons, I just use the previous adhesive. All it's doing is holding those cables, uh, just holding them lightly down against the back side of the glass. But I am hitting this with a little bit of alcohol where I know my bracket is gonna be mounting here in, in a moment so that I don't have any likelihood of that bracket coming loose. Actually, there is still something. A bit of glue or something here. And obviously I'm trying my hardest not to get any alcohol on the Tessa adhesive if I can avoid it. Though it dries so quick, this, this high, high strength alcohol evaporates almost instantly anything it touches. Use this for cleaning 
logic boards and all kinds of stuff after soldering, things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remember, I still, I removed the plastic ring, okay? I removed the plastic ring and uh, I'm reusing the original one and I put the adhesive back on here too, uh, the original adhesive. And uh, what I wanna do is look at this flat edge. If you look at the home button closely, there is a flat edge here, a flat edge here. Those should be aligned exactly perpendicular to each other and squared with these lines. And this is an important step. You want that home button to be sitting there, in there, perfectly square in the way that it came out. And now I'm gonna take my spludger tool and I'm gonna to go all the way around the edge and just adhere the little plastic band down to the outside of the glass. Okay, now what I like to do is take the cable now and be very careful. This is attached here and you do not wanna tear it, but I like to fold it over just like this to allow me to line up this bracket easier. And I have a phone call. Okay, this is one of the most difficult parts of this job. These little lines help, but they are not necessarily perfect, okay? What is important is that when you look underneath this bracket right here, you see the little circular silver nub? That must line up perfectly with that tiny black nipple on the actual home button itself. Now, I've done enough of these over the years that I've gotten really good at knowing where to put this bracket. If it's your first time, you're gonna wanna be really careful. And if I'm trying to get this camera here at an angle so you can see what I mean, but you see how the bracket has a little, you can see the little nipple there. It's kind of blurry, I know, but it's probably as good as we're gonna get. But uh, you're gonna want that to be lined up like that when you stick it, okay? If you stick it and it's like out of line like that, you gotta pry it back up and move it. So it's nice to be able to use these lines as somewhat of a guide, okay? Like I said, not all replacement screens have that, but it's important to tip it on its edge and look down underneath there and make sure you get those lined up. And getting the camera to focus on this is not easy. And then I also not only like to look at it this way, but I like to turn the whole thing this way and just look all around to make sure that I have that thing properly lined up. If it's not, pull it up and redo it. You will regret not doing that. Your button won't click right, you know, the top won't work on only the bottom and things like that. Or being misaligned can actually break that little nipple off of the home button itself. And when that kind of stuff happens after you've put it all back together for the five minutes extra you spend right now doing this can save you hours of work having to redo something. Okay guys, so as I just said, if you do put this bracket on and it does not look like it is lined up perfectly when you look at it from this angle like this, again, we're looking at, we want to see that little nipple right there and this camera's not gonna cooperate probably, but maybe, there we go. So that nipple has to line up with that pad. And, the, and I actually pulled this up after what I just videoed, removed the entire bracket, put on new tape and realigned it again because I didn't have it perfect. I'm telling you, that has got to be perfect. And once you do get it on there and you get it perfect and you've looked at it from all angles and you've turned it and looked under there to make sure no matter how you turn this, that the nipple is centered with the little metal piece then you can turn this over and just t test your home button. Make sure 
when you push on every edge, that's that feels perfect. Like there is no sharp edges here. Feels exactly like it the original one did, okay? It is the original one, but it is using all the original components has kept that feeling exactly like it should. It clicks exactly like it should. It feels exactly right. And I can push on all edges of this home button on the sides all the way around and it all clicks exactly the same. That's how you know you have it aligned right. If it's not aligned right, you're gonna push on the top. It's gonna to feel a little different. It's not gonna click quite right. You gotta push a little harder. Anything like that is an indicator that you need to remove the bracket and realign it. Okay, so now I know I got the bracket aligned. I'm actually gonna pull this little bit of this flex cable back up. I only put it down so I could test the button function. I'm gonna do the same thing I here again and kind of tape, use the stickiness on the back side. Remember, this has a film on it, so I'm not putting that directly on the glass. There's a protective film there. But ideal here is I want to be able to, I want to be able to apply my adhesive here to this bracket because even though I got it held down with that super strong double side sticky tape, I know that over time in hot conditions, sitting in the car, the kids are playing video games, they push on this button really hard, this can detach from the back of a hot iPad, okay? If that screen gets overheated in the sun and then a kid pushes hard on that button, it can cause this to break free. Apple from the factory, they use a similar type of adhesive and they use the double-sided tape just like I used to set it and get it in place and make sure it's all working right. Then I'm gonna apply this uh, T7000 and I like this sucks in black. Uh, like I said, they make, you know, you can get other brands. This is from another vendor. This is clear. Uh, I think this one's clear. You know, any type of T7000 will probably work. I just, I've come to rely on this brand. I like it a lot. Oh, I think this might have a hole in it. Dang on it. Okay, I'm gonna take a time out here for a second. I'm gonna have to grab a new tube. I think I might have punctured that somehow. Okay, guys, back. I got, I got a new tube. I buy this stuff like five, 10 tubes at a time usually. There's a UPC, that sticker's still on this one. If, uh, want to see the exact stuff I use. I love it. I use this not only for this, but also occasionally when a housing is extremely damaged and or dented or has an issue where glass may not seat fully without putting a bind on it due to the twist or kink or something like that in the metal housing. Um, I will apply this along with the uh, Tessa adhesive and use this to hold the screens down. It works great for that too. It is removable. It is, so this stuff dries like a hard, this is already dry, this already dried on my hand. It's almost like a rubbery, it's like a, it dries like a hard rubbery, kind of like a caulking, kind of dries kind of like a caulking, I guess. But uh, when you put it in a bead, it's more like a glue. It's kind of like, which caulking kind of is too, but it's a little bit harder than caulking and it holds better than what a caulking would, but it's a very similar type of a flexible rubber. Okay, so this does come with a micro tip, which is what I like a lot too. It makes it easy to apply this stuff. But you can see, I'm just gonna go a nice bead right around this edge and this edge. It's just a nice bead. I like to overlap onto the metal a little bit here to kind of give it something to grip. And I've had screens come back after I've repaired them and they're broken again for whatever reason. And when I go to remove this home button, I can pry this back up again. It's gonna have a little grip and it takes a little effort, but that's better than this breaking off. Uh, while it's applied. I also put a little drop of this usually right on the edge of that home button just to kind of hold it uh, and keep that seal in place. And then the reason I fold the uh, reason I fold this cable over like this is because 
right here, I wanna put a bead, and if that cable's down, you can't access this top edge. Okay, so I got all of the bead on there. Before I lay that cable down, I'm gonna let that cure. I like to let this cure for at least a couple hours. A lot of times, if I'm working on multiple devices, I'll leave this go overnight, actually, and then I'll just finish up the uh, installation in the morning. I'm gonna set this off to the side and I'll uh, catch back up when it's time to install this bad boy. Okay, this is gonna be the end, final steps here. Um, I do have, this has been glued and is now cured. Uh, so I'm gonna gently go ahead and seat this cable back the way it's supposed to go. Just adheres right on the very bottom edge. And again, just using the original sticky adhesive from peeling it up, it's plenty to hold it in place there. And we'll peel. So our cables are exposed here. Now this, uh, usually on this, I like to go ahead and hook the home button up first. Again, remember the little flap must be lifted. Then insert the cable, push it in there. You don't have to push it hard. It'll go right in and then you latch that down. And then this cable has a little stickiness on it. I always push that down right there. Again, I'm gonna use my spray can here it's got some good weight it'll hold that screen I'm gonna go ahead and just flip up that little tab of the adhesive okay this retainer a uh, little foam it's not foam it's a hard rubber hard rubber uh, little block sits in there on top of that cable um, Keep, gives that cable some extra support and then I did save my little adhesive here that goes on the connector reapply that just gently then your two digitizer connectors take your time on this you don't have to force these I'm looking at an angle here to try and make sure I've got that lined up like it's supposed to. If they don't snap down at first, don't get frustrated. Take your time. You can damage these and they just snap on when they are lined up perfectly. A lot of times with the good screens in particular, you will hear that puppy snap in and you know it's properly connected. Again, some of the cheaper type screens you know, that are 10, 15 bucks less than these premium grade, they might not really click like that. And you can't tell if they're connected right. Just another one of those little things. Buying the better part always pays off in the long run. All right. After getting the home button reconnected and the digitizer battery block still in place. Very important here. This is the part where you can blow... Uh, backlight inverter if you try and connect this LCD with that battery not being blocked and you cross any pins and this this did the exact same thing I know you can't see too well with the camera probably but that is snapped on so at this point I take a good look at the LCD and I see and I don't know if it'll show up in the camera or not but I see you see a spot here so there are some dust particles. I'm not gonna worry about those just yet. I have not touched this. There are no fingerprints on this. It is clean. I kept it in a, in a box with a lid uh, to prevent any um, anyone touching it, anything hitting it, anything like that. So we just reverse the process here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the metal plate on first and then I will pull the battery block once I have this, this screwed in here. And again, this ends up being a little bit tricky because you have to hold this up. So I'm gonna use 
just oh and the tools are key especially for stuff like this these are magnetized tools so I can seat that screw on on the tip of my screwdriver and I can hold this screen up and I'm not trying to hold that little screw in place or hold it with tweezers I'm just reaching over to my mat over here touching the screw it sticks to my screwdriver align it and install it one more same thing all of them are snug I'm going to go ahead and pull the battery block now and put that last screw in Just snug it up. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and seat this LCD. And we know we need to clean it, but I'm still not even gonna do that yet because I'm now at the point where I wanna test it. So there may be some dust on the underside of this screen. I will hit this real quick just to, I really don't wanna push any adhesive or gunk down onto that LCD. So I'm just making sure I don't get anything in there. And I'm going to just fold this down. Obviously, I haven't peeled any of the adhesive strips, nothing like that yet. Just want to kick it on. And we will do a quick test here once this thing kicks on. Hopefully, this battery had... Yep, oh, it did come on. It started to come on. And I turned it back off. It might be dead. I'm going to have to put this on the charger. So I'm going to pause this. Oh, let's see if it fully boots. It might... This battery might be so weak that it's not gonna fully boot. Let's see what we get here. have a lot of stuff oh yeah the battery is really weak on this um well it says eight percent but that a lot of times when they're that low they they act kind of shady let me put the code in here and just do a quick test make sure everything's working right on the touch this thing feels a little laggy and it's not but it's not the screen after you unhook the battery and then hook it back up you can see it already says five percent there um, to me i think this thing is probably running in a low power mode or a power save mode but before i ever reassemble fully and glue and do the final cleaning and everything i want to make sure that this ipad charges okay because sometimes when you block the battery then you screw everything back in and you get it all back together you can have an issue where for some reason i don't know if it's the power management ic or what but i have seen a few times where i'll reassemble and then it won't take a charge and i have to remove the uh put the battery block block take it back apart take put the battery block back in and pull the battery block back out again after discharging all the power from the board and then put the screw back in and then it charges perfectly fine. So I've learned just from doing this so many times, it's always a good idea with an iPad charger, go ahead and plug it in before finally reassembling. And I'm gonna make sure that increments up to about seven, eight percent, 10, whatever. And then I will go ahead and we'll finalize this. Okay, we're back, and you can see now I am at 17%. So I ended up opening, opening this back up, and I went ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and power this down while I'm talking here. Um, I did have to put the battery block back in. It was on the charger for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and it would not increment above 8%. If you remember when I turned this on, it said 8%, dropped to five pretty rapidly. 
Then I plugged it in and it charged. It jumped back up to 8% pretty quickly. And then it just stayed there for like 15 minutes on the charger. It should have incremented up, it didn't. I opened it back up, uh, reinserted the battery block, uh, loosened the screw, reinserted the battery block, um, and powered it off, drained the power again, removed the battery block, reinserted the screw, Put it, put it back in ready to test and I kicked it on by plugging in, I didn't use the power button, I actually just plugged in the lightning cable. It rebooted and immediately showed 15%. Okay, so for some reason it was, the battery was charging, but the indicator was sort of like stuck on 8%. So that concerned me and I'm glad I did that. After I kicked it back on, it was at 15. I left it plugged in for a couple minutes and it incremented up to 17. Now I feel good uh, that we're gonna get the correct reading and the charging is working the way it should. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, we gotta put our LCD screws back in. I go ahead and put those four, last four screws back. And again, I laid these out in the exact order that I removed them in the same pattern on my ma magnetic pads. I use these little magnetic pads to hold all screws whenever I'm disassembling devices. I've got multiple of them sitting here on my desk. Each device gets its own pad that I'm working on. Uh, so I don't mix up screws, forget screws, leave out anything. I know when the pad is empty, all the screws have been reinstalled. Okay, so I do see we've got a little bit of stuff here on our LCD again, okay? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it real quick with compressed air just to blow any dust particles off. And then if you have stubborn particles, sometimes the air won't blow them off. I keep in a uh, old medicine bottle here, these are L very soft LCD cloths. I keep them in here because I don't use these for anything other than wiping the LCDs. That way I know these are clean. They don't have any gunk on them. I'm not smearing stuff onto the, onto the uh, screen. Um, so, you know, you can actually use a, a cloth that's got a little gooey adhesive on it and then rub that on your LCD and actually make a mess so I look at this from all angles. I do see a couple little particles still, but I'm not gonna worry about them just yet because before I go any further, I wanna go ahead and remove my two protective films now, okay? And the reason I do this is so that I can get a good look with the glass down one more time before doing the actual final adhesion here. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this inner one. And I just noticed something with this particular screen. It's a little different than the X07 that I normally use in that the film here goes further down. So the film's actually under my home button flex. I don't, I don't like that, but it peeled fine. Just be careful. The X07's, the film is cut closer up or higher up and I don't ever have that issue, but there you go, a little variance in the screens and little things that happen. You know, I'm, uh, this video, I've touched on a few things. There's a lot of video repair videos out there. I touched on a few more of the intricate things that other people don't discuss, like the details with the home button, the details with the battery blocking, and those kind of issues. So hopefully I save somebody uh, from having to deal with stuff. Okay, so now that I have the film off, probably not gonna translate well on camera, but I can see very clearly there are no smudges on the glass. The glass looks great. The film, that's another reason I like these screens from Mobile Centrics. Uh, the film comes up cleanly. It doesn't leave smudges. When they assemble these, whatever factory they're using for these, they do a great job. Now I do have a, I do have actually, I see. Oh, one other thing too, when you're using this spray stuff, you do not want to shake the can. They put uh, some bitterant in there um, because I guess people sniff that stuff. 
but they put a bitter in there. It's like an oil. And if you shake that can, it will spew out a little drop droplets. So I like this. Actually, I got this at Walmart. This this is pretty good. Some some cans I've used before um, actually have too much of that bitter in, and I don't even like to use them because even tipping the can will cause it to uh, spew out little droplets. And that's exactly what we don't want. We're trying to get this perfectly spot free here. There, I got that stubborn little spot. Uh, you, if you, I don't know if it showed up on the camera. I did just use some a little uh, bit of uh, my breath. Actually, it works great. It's just a little bit enough moisture. If you got something a little sticky there, and then. I'm gonna move this light around. I see a couple more loose particles I'm gonna hit. And I always get it as clean as I can at this phase, and then I'm gonna hit it one more time with air. I know there's nothing stuck. Anything else that lands on this is just dust or pollen particles floating around in the air here in my shop. Okay, so we're now at the point. It's time to peel the, uh, it's time to peel the adhesives. Probably, not going to be able to see every step of the way here, but you'll get the idea. And again, this is where the little paper tabs just come in so handy. That just makes it so much easier. Oh, I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting with trying to peel. This one right here has got a little nub of paper. This is, it is a very important part. You don't want to touch this adhesive if you can at all avoid it. Um, and you don't want bubbles in the adhesive tape. I always look at it really carefully, make sure there's no bubbles in it. Um, generally, these things come pretty good from the factory, but occasionally, actually, I'm gonna show you guys something right here I just noticed. On this adhesive, I see where this adhesive strip has overlapped this one. So they didn't put this adhesive on very well. So I'm gonna pause the camera here and I'm going to peel this up a little bit and trim that because I have adhesive on top of adhesive. That's gonna create a bulge, a little bump, and that in turn is not gonna allow this to seat perfectly flush. So I'm gonna fix that real quick and then I'll be right back. Okay. So I used my X-Acto blade and a pair of tweezers. I pulled the adhesive up and this is the sharp blade and made a couple little slices. Now the tape still looks like it's overlapping, but I removed the actual adhesive right here from this one strip uh, to make sure that those do not overlap. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and peel these remaining strips. This bottom one right here, can be a little tricky um, when you do this because you got two cables right here so you can't just peel that so I usually peel it and then move it to the back side sorry for the shaking camera I bumped and then peel the remainder slowly right there and then I will double check to make sure and it is all gone right there so that did peel and then one more left. Let's get that little flap. All right, guys. So at this stage, I have tested everything, tested my home button, fingerprint readers working, making sure everything is as it should be. Because once I put this screen down, there is no way to get it back up. Uh, once I drop it and heat it and clamp it, it will be not coming back up. So now is my last time. I'm going to hit it with air to remove any particles. I see a couple that have landed here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the underside of this glass. Now I'm gonna lower this, man. Okay, I got a stubborn piece here, so let me get one of my towels. 
Again, this is, that piece would not blow off with the air, but it came right up with my LCD cloth. Okay, I'm gonna not close this all the way. I'm gonna just lower it down, take one more visual. I'm gonna line up the corner here, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm not pinching any of the cables and they're sliding under like they're supposed to. All of those did, especially the home button cable. You do not want to pinch that between the glass and the alloy. So make sure that's folded under there like it's supposed to. Take your time. And I see that's on the outside, no problem. I see nothing under, so I am good to go here. So the final thing I do, line up this corner where I know the cables are, give it a little push. Then I'm gonna go ahead and push these corners into place. Go right around the edge one time here. And I have absolutely no dust. That looks beautiful. It looks just like the factory. Now, I'm not gonna use this cloth. I'm putting it away because I only wanna use that on my LCDs, but I have other cloths, uh, lens cloths that I use. Now, I just like to go around the edge like this, and I'm just pushing kind of hard. Not super hard, don't want to break the glass, but I am gonna make sure we get a nice, tight, even seal, making sure everything is level on the edges. That all feels good. Another thing I like about this Mobile Centrix glass, it's nice and heavy. Some of the cheaper screens, you actually feel a flex when you squeeze and push like this. You can feel a flex in the glass. I cannot stand that. That tells me it's, it's a cheaply made screen if you can push on it on the edge and feel it flexing. This is solid as a rock. All right. Okay, not done yet. From this stage, it is adhered, but I am never convinced that that is gonna hold up uh, long term, okay? That glass could pull up under different weather conditions or handling, so I always heat it again, lightly. I'm not trying to heat it as much uh, as I did to remove the glass, but I want that adhesive underneath to get a little bit gooey but I don't want to damage the new screen by applying too much heat. So I'm going to check it with my fingers. It should feel hot to the touch, but it shouldn't burn you. That's for sure. So warm that up nice. That feels good. It is hot to the touch, but not, not going to burn me. And then I need to grab my uh, clamps. Okay, these are the clamps I like to use. They're made specifically for doing this. They are the same brand as my uh, uh, tools, uh, pry tools, Kian Lee, I guess. Uh, it's the way it's pronounced. Um, they're finger adjustable, but this is the same brand. Just lost the little stickers off of it because all the alcohol I put on it. But these are micro adjustable clamps so you turn this quite a bit just to move a little bit but that's what you want because you want to put pressure on this screen but you want it very controlled just snugging these up i know and they got a little rubber cushion here inside so it's not metal directly on glass there's a hard rubber uh, inside there so it makes it Perfect. These are perfect for this. And like I said, that's actually what they're made for. I mean, I've got the ones I got, I probably got 30 bucks, but I do this all day long. You could get away without clamping it or using maybe some other type of clamp or turning it upside down on a table and putting something heavy on it. Um, but I highly recommend heating it, even if it's with a hair dryer, after applying. Uh, the new adhesive and it will help that new adhesive stick like it's supposed to like it did like it was from the factory so I usually add these 
and they sell these things in sets of four, I think. Uh, I think a set of four is like maybe 12 bucks or something on most of your uh, mobile repair websites, 12 or 15. I've got obviously here three sets of four because I have learned over the years you can never scr scrimp especially at this stage where you've done the, the repairs done it's completed and the last thing you want is something silly like the adhesive didn't stick and the screen pulls up in a corner and then dust and junk works its way in or the home button stops working because if it comes up here you're putting stress on that cable so this little step right here of clamping I would never skip this uh, professionally. And I highly recommend you figure out a way if you're doing this at home. I'm going to warm this up a little bit with the clamps on now. And then I like to go around and just it's nice and warm and with clamps and I'm going to hit all between all of these clamps to make sure that nothing's popped up everything feels great there's no clicking or anything when I push so I know everything is adhered that Tessa brand tape uh, even though this screen I had to do a little fix on it it is still it's excellent adhesive it is the best in my opinion. Uh, it's definitely what you want to look for if you're not buying your screens where I got them. If they, if they at least say uh, that they have Tessa. I don't know if you can see this printed here. It's T-E-S-A. Uh, it is the best, best tape by far. And the black type is what is heat activated. So that's why you heat it after applying it. That heat actually melts it a little bit and kind of makes it extra gooey and sticky. And then as it cools and cures, it creates a super tight bond all the way around. Water, I'll say water resistant, very water resistant, but also dust resistant. Nothing worse than having dust particles or glass particles or anything trapped underneath your screen of your iPad that you got to stare at forever. All right, that's pretty much it. I'm going to let this sit. Uh, uh, this customer brought in two iPads. The other one's done already, and this is the second one. So uh, I'm going to let this sit overnight clamped, and it'll cool off and cure. And uh, yeah, it's, tomorrow will be good to go. Thanks for watching. Any questions, you can leave them in the comments.